This is my little brother, Tyler, and my name's Kyle. Obviously, this is my channel. We're stationed in Okinawa, Japan together. He's like 30 some minutes down the road. We just went and got Cocos. I've been on Island for about six months now, so. And I've been here for 16 months. Yeah. So he's Marines, I'm Air Force. So first off, we're gonna start with questions from Facebook. John Bishop asks, difference between E3s in the Air Force versus in the Marines? For those of you that don't know what E3 is, uh, in the Air Force, that's Airman First Class. That's what I'm ranked at. Lance Corporal in the Marine Corps. That's what I am. So we're both E3s right now. An E3 in the Air Force is just like a normal work. The <clears throat> majority of the people are going to be E3 in the Air Force. Like my shop, that's like the most is we have more A1Cs than anything else. They're considered part of the Airmen tier. E3, you're just like a normal worker. You're going to work all the time. Uh, you're not a supervisor. You're not even close to supervisor because you still have the E4. And then for Marines, how does that work for you guys? It really depends whether you're an air winger or you're ground side. Because if you're a ground side E3 Lance Corporal, it's hard to pick up ground side, like grunts. Uh, Lance Corporal Grunt, probably really, really well respected. Whereas air winger side, really, uh, corporals are the first rank where you start being well, well respected because it's a lot easier to pick up air wing side than ground side. For E3 air wingers like I am, say majority of us are just workers. Once you hit E4, you're an NCO, non-commissioned officer. That's when you really start picking up leadership skills. So he's like a supervisor at E4. Yes, you'd be a supervisor at E4. You tell Lance Corporals and below, go do this. I'm gonna watch you do this, make sure you do it right. You train them so that when they become E4s and E5s, they train their E3s and below to do their job. So pretty much E3 is pretty equivalent in the two branches, but E4 is where the big difference happens. Because we'll both be getting E4 within the next year, and he'll have more of a supervisor role. I won't be a supervisor, but I'll be a working airman that kind of trains newer airmen, but I still don't have that leadership role really. The big difference happens at E4. That's when it, it's a, a big difference between the two branches. Tyler Madden asks, difference in pay, difference on time of leave. We pay is universal. Yeah, it's all military military. wide. Whatever rank you are, based on uh, your time. Like I hit two years about 10 days ago, so my pay grade jumped up. Even though I'm an E3, if there was a Lance Corporal that was in for one year, my pay grade's more because I've been in longer. But overall, pay grades are the same. In fact, you can even get online, just look it up. And if you want to know more about pay and how to break it down, I actually made a video on military money. Uh, link is going to be in the description below if you want to check that out. And then, as far as difference on time of leave, uh, all military gets 30 days a year is what we you can gain. But you can store more than that. Like, if we both don't take leave for two years, we'll have 60 days of leave built up. It's pretty much two and a half days of leave each month is what you earn. Major and Cox, what do you guys think of each, of each other's companies? Who made the better choice and why? Um, I wouldn't really call the military a company, but I mean, Air Force, they're a corporation, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Marine Corps are cold. Yeah, no, between the different branches, really you can't, you can't make that decision who, who made the better choice and why. Because ever, ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be in the military way before he even thought about it. So I'd be his inspiration. Um, like, when I was six and stuff, I just remember I'd always play with G.I. Joe's, saying, hey, that's what I want to do. I played with Barbies. He did. I stole them from our sister. Um, I'd say, I mean, I made the best choice because this is what I wanted to do ever since I was a kid. So I'm literally living my dream right now by being in the military but he could argue the same thing because he doesn't have as many rules as I do and I didn't want to join any other branch and like it's not really like a better choice I mean because each of us joined the branch for a reason and like you wouldn't choose another branch mm -mm. and I wouldn't choose another branch so I feel like we both made the best choices for ourselves but who made the better choice obviously I did because you know not everybody's a Marine. Next question is Chris Vi Vigil? 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 Sorry if we, you know, slaughtered that, but Something Chris around. Vigil. What is it like for both brothers to be in different branches and why do you guys 
and why you guys join different branches. Uh, that goes into the last question, really. Like I said, I wanted to do this since I was a kid. At first, like in my early teens, I was like, oh, I'm going to be in the Army because I watched G.I. Joe, and I was like, oh, I'm going to be a G.I. Joe. And then I grew up, and it wasn't actually until middle school, like seventh grade, I was in our library reading a book, and they had the TV on. NCO stand on top of a mountain with his sword held in front of his face, and then had the motto, the few, the proud, the Marines. And I said, that was the most B.A. commercial I've ever seen in my life. So from that moment, I was like, I'm going to be a Marine. As soon as I was old enough to join, I went to the recruiter was like, hey, sign me up. So apparently, the Marine Corps recruiting commercials work. They do. Because all because of one commercial you guys made. That's why he joined. I pretty much wanted to join when, uh, Cause well, not it. wanted to join, but when September 11th happened, that was like the big thing that stuck with me throughout like middle school and high school. Neil Hoskins asked the quality of life, like the things on base, the quality of dorms, things like that. Well, you've never been in the dorms other than like your tech school or your like training pretty much. Air Force got it. It has it easy. I live in the dorms. Dorm life isn't that bad. Yeah. Here at Kadena, we have some of these smaller like uh, single airmen dorms that you'll be at in the Air Force. At least one, for my job. One to a room. <clears throat> yeah, but it's one to a room. And we have like a suite mate kind of, like we share a common area, but we have our individual rooms. And then you can tell them Must how, be nice. Yeah, the single guys in the Marines live. He has a room to himself in his barracks, whereas my Marines in the barracks here are three to a room. The Air Force has it better. Yeah, pretty much we, we have a lot better. For a living, mm. their room's twice as big, but they have three people in it. It's still like small living because you have three beds inside that room. Just and, think uh, about it, like if any one of you have seen Twenty Two Jump Street. I'm using this because I watched it last night and it's freaking hilarious. Um, when they go to college and they like throw the bags on the ground and they're like, "Oh, this is so cool!" and they like jump on their beds. That's about the size of one of our barracks rooms. And then for things on base. Kadena here has like chilies. Yeah, we have two like chilies, two restaurants. That's or what restaurants. the Air Force needed. They said, uh -huh. "Welcome to Japan. Let's bring America over with us." Two chilies. RBX is the nicest on the island, which is like the mall or shopping center. Usually, Air Force is going to have a lot nicer things on their base. Mm -hmm. Usually, it's just Air Force gives you a lot better like standard of living. I guess for the most part. But like we're these like he's in I don't know what you call it apartment building kind of I'm in a tower they call them the towers it's basically yeah it's an apartment building married life not really a big difference that I can see but uh, single life definitely a huge difference Kelton Dobbs asked about PT what's your guys' PT test like to pass what do you have to do oh I don't know. Yeah, see, I don't even think about the minimums. I have to look it up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know anything about the minimums. I strive to get the best that I can every time. But, I mean, if that's a gen just a general PT question, there, Dobbs, it would probably be whatever you like to do, really. My squadron can have squadron PT. Like, my shop or whatnot. Like, hey, uh, let's all get together. Let's go do something. And let's... PT, and you can do that, but then on your off time, it's really, if you want to do CrossFit, you can do CrossFit. If you want to do Zumba, you can do Zumba. You know, you can do whatever you want. PT. Just if go you want to break dance? Yeah. You can do that. I actually had a sergeant that used to do that. So, yeah, and then it's the same thing for us. Like, we just started doing shop PT. Like, three of our guys on our shift will PT on, on my shift, will PT on, like, Monday and Wednesday, and then, like, me and two other guys on our shift will PT on Tuesday and Thursday when we like switch off and on. In Corona said, are there similar or different career fields in the two branches? There's similar and different career fields in every branch. Yeah. Like I could be air crew, what he does in the Air Force. But it's a, it's a similar job. And so like if you wanted to fly on the Ospreys, mm -hmm. you could do that in Air Force or Marines like what you do. Yeah. And then if you wanted to be my job is in the Marines too. Mm -hmm. Like they have sheet metal. Air framers. Yeah. They call it airframes, so airframe mechanics. Yeah, so like that's my job in 
So both of our jobs are in both branches. The Marines don't have any medical. It's all run by the oh, Navy. The Navy. Oh yeah, because you guys are part of the, the Navy. Navy. You're a detachment of the Navy, yes. right? Yes. Okay, yeah. So Marines are a detachment of the Navy, owned by the Navy. If you wanted to be medical, you'd have to go into like the Navy. You guys don't have dental either, that'd be all Navy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much all of the different branches have like very similar jobs, except for like that instance. Oh goodness, almost dropped it. It's not like Marines only do these jobs, Air Force only does these jobs, Navy only does these jobs. Like, a lot of the jobs are in all the branches, even the Army, so. They're all similar, yes. But some of them are better in some areas, like Alexander Glosser. Which branch is easier to gain rank in? I, there's a shop, uh, sergeant that I work with, not in my shop, but he picked up Sergeant E5 in two years, which in the Marine Corps, that's almost unheard of. Oh, that's impossible in the Air Force. Like, that that's extremely, you, you had to do real good to do that. Job fields depend a lot. True, that's the same for us too, though. If you pick a job field, like, uh, I know when I was getting in, UAVs was opening up as a job, and people were flooding into that, and as soon as they got in there, they were ranking up really, really fast because, because there was no one there. Because they needed supervisors in that career field, and they didn't have the numbers they needed, so they have to promote. Like so, my job, say like, there's only three, they need three staff sergeants that year. So out of like the hundreds of people in aircraft structural maintenance that test for staff sergeant next year, if only three of them can make it, the only three people out of however many people test make it, but say they need like 100 staff sergeants to fill spots, then all of a sudden a ton of people make it. So it also, yeah, it depends on your career field. So that's a, a great thing to bring up because it really isn't just like everybody can, is like even, it's, Different career fields need more supervisors than others at certain times. Austin Jones, are the rules similar between the two bases or is one more strict than the other? Uh, yeah, it's definitely more strict on the Marine Corps base than the Air Force base. Definitely more strict. You guys have rules like, you guys can walk around with like cut off t-shirts and stuff like that on Air Force base. It's free game. Do yeah, there's no rules, like, <laughs> I do what I want. as long as you don't dress like yeah, like half naked. But if you wear like a cut off t-shirt and shorts and flip flops, that's allowable on an Air Force base, at least here at Kadena. Not allowable on a Marine base. Um, I actually got stopped at Kadena one time on, like on base in the BX. Some guy was like, uh, you guys mind coming over here? And then he was like mad. What do you guys think you're doing dressed like that? I was like, dressed like what? He's like in your beach gear. Cause we had cut off t-shirts on, shorts and flip flops. And I was like, we're in the Air Force. And he goes, oh, you guys are allowed to just walk around like that here? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh. And I was like, I know in the Marines you're not supposed to, but we're not on a Marine base. And then he got mad and walked away. They're definitely more strict on Marine base. Uh, yeah, rules are a lot more strict on Marine bases. Well, I shouldn't say Marine bases in general. I should just say Okinawa in general. Well, I mean, as a whole, we have a curfew and all that. Like, all the bases. We all have midnight curfew, no drinking off base. Yeah. All the, that's DOD-wide, like Department of Defense. All branches of the military have this rule. But on base, you guys are a little more strict than us. Yeah. Fine, yeah. Overall, our curfew and all that is, like, through all of it. It doesn't matter what branch you're in. Elijah Bramblett. What the higher authority personnel are like towards lower ranks? In the Air Force, it's more laid back. I know that. Yeah. Because I think you guys are more like you can't hang out with the different tiers of people. You're not as much. You're not technically supposed to, but I mean. In the Air Force, it used to be like that. It's not so much anymore now. It's a lot more laid back between like like your supervisors and airmen. Everybody kind of hangs out and like does get together activities with everybody. So at work, like you'll probably get lit up if you don't call someone like sergeant something. In situations like in my job, if we have an engine running and you really can't hear anything and you need to talk to someone, I know occasionally I'll just yell out their last name at the top of my lungs just to get their attention. But I mean, like if I'm just chilling in the shop or I'm walking through the shop and I run into them, it's proper greeting of the day and say the rank, so like, good afternoon sergeant, good evening sergeant, blah, all that stuff, but situation dictates what needs to be said. That's, that's off topic from what the question was, 
yeah. how they actually are towards towards us in the Marines. I guess I really don't know how to put it other than like junior Marines, E3s and below, are the legs and arms of the Marine Corps. <laughs> like they do all the running, they do all the Yeah, they, they do all the the real work per se. Whereas like corporals and sergeants, I guess it'd be like eyes and mouth type stuff and then officers are the brains. They, they control the situation, but really it comes down to it like junior marines are the ones doing the majority of the work. It's good if you stay in your place. If you, if you don't, you know, try to step out of your zone, then generally you don't get, you know, lit up. If you're stupid, they're going to be a dick to you. Put it that way. If you're smart and you hold your tongue and you do what you're supposed to, you just stay in line and do what you're told, they're not going to... You know, <laughs> hate you, right? Yeah. They're not gonna look down at you as much. <laughs> exactly. Jordan Yarbrough said, "How much each one travels? Maybe I'm assuming they mean job-wise, not like on leave. Because we answered maybe earlier, we each get 30 days of leave a year. We can save it or use it whenever we want. But traveling with your job, you travel quite a bit in your job or will in the future. Yeah, I'll travel a lot compared to him. He's on." Uh, on the Ospreys air crew, so like whenever the Ospreys go places, like you're gonna go with them. Yeah. So like he'll be traveling a lot. Me, we send people with some of the aircraft when we send them like to different locations. It's like one or two, like one month TDYs a year, and maybe a deployment in there every so many years. So you'll probably end up overall traveling more. But between our two jobs, like for maintenance, you'll travel like quite a bit. Probably like. Two, two to three times a year you'll travel <laughs> and then yours you'll travel yeah I've like, been I've been with the fleet or my squadron for about six months now and I've been how many places off island have you been I've been to five different places off island <laughs> yeah so he's in six months he's gone to like five different places and I've been here for 16 months and I've gone to I was supposed to go to Guam uh, but then they ended up sending me to Washington DC so that's been my only trip so far but Last time I went on leave in May, there was a TDY that I missed out on that I was I could have gone on. And then this time I'm going on leave like in two days and there's like multiple TDYs that I'm missing out on because of that. So um, it also depends when you take your leave because when we had all of our TDYs coming out, I was on leave. So, or I'm going on leave. Yeah, traveling just depends on your job. I mean, if you consider deployments travel, then yeah, most definitely Marines travel more. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I right. haven't been on deployment yet. Like I said, I've only been in for a short amount of time. We, yeah, we've both been in for, you just hit your two year mark and I hit my two year mark in two months. And you hit your two year mark 10 days ago. Yep. And I hit mine in two months. And neither of us have deployed yet. It's not like when you join the Marines, you're gonna be deployed like as soon as, a lot of people think like you get in the military and it's like deployment, deployment, like you just like live in a tent your whole life and it's not like that at all. Yeah. Like, we're doing a Q&A right now, and he's playing the PS3 on this huge TV. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's like, it's pretty normal life, actually. It's not... Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm just a normal 21-year-old kid <laughs> that's married and living in the military. All right, next question is from Samantha Coley. What is it like for both of you, one, being away from your family and friends, two, being able to be stationed close to each other? Being away from friends and family? It's been like two years being away from everyone, yeah. so it's like, I don't know, it's kind of just like normal. From the moment I left from boot camp, I don't care. The only time it gets bad is like right now when I'm two days away from getting on a plane, and I'm like so anxious to get back and see people. But it's like, other than that, um, for the most part, it's not like I'm really like, oh my gosh, I miss home so much, all this stuff. It's like only when I'm like, a few weeks away from going on leave is when I like start to get really, really anxious and miss home a lot or miss people. So it's like, I don't know, being away, it's just like, it's not that, and holidays is pretty rough too. Uh, have you gone through holiday? You haven't gone through one yet. Yeah. Oh, but you're what you have. I was in boot camp you know, during one. Thanksgiving, Christmas. True. <laughs> All New that's, Year's. That's like, that's rough during the holidays. But you also couldn't see Facebook or any of that. I was here last year during Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yeah. 
And all I saw on Facebook was like, everybody's like, oh, with my family, opening up presents. And I'm like, in my dorm room, like, yeah. I have nobody. <laughs> I'm so yeah, and it was like, that's what makes it rough when you're away from home. It's like, the holidays are pretty bad when you're alone. I didn't miss, like, at basic and everything. The only time I got anxious was, like, the last week of basic. Same with tech school. The week before tech school, that was the only time I got really anxious to come home and see people. But other than that, I was just, like, enjoying myself. I don't know. It's not that hard being away from family. It's kind of just, you just get used to it. You suck it up, really. Since I've been out here in Okinawa, I've called home maybe, like, ten times. My wife, she's called home hundreds of times. <laughs> thousands. Thousands of times <laughs> trying to talk to her family, and I just don't get it, because, I mean, it's not... It's inconvenient, too, like... Yeah, I just kind of, you know what, if I'm going to be out here, I'm going to be out here, I'm not going to worry about what's going on in the States. I got my own life to live right now. I'm a grown adult. Yeah, on the other side of the planet, you can't constantly try to live at home when you're 7,000 miles away, so... I mean, and it just... You say updated, if, like, big things happen, we know about it, we talk about it, but... We don't like, like I don't text my mom daily and like have constant conversation with her about stuff. We talk about big things or if we need to schedule things and every once in a while we'll talk on the phone for like an hour and catch up, but that's like once a month, if that. For the most part, we just shoot each other like a text or two here or there. It's not that hard, really. Uh, being stationed close to each other too, uh, this is like the second time we've hung out. No, third, third, time. third time. Third time we've hung out in six months he's been here. Uh, it's been like busy because I was in DC for a week. You were. He's off doing like, little promotional videos for the Air Force <laughs> while us workers are actually doing real work back at home. Yeah. <laughs> so he's off like working and traveling and doing stuff, and I'm off working and like I had to go to DC and then just with a whole bunch of stuff, it's been just really hectic. So, and you live like, it's like it took me 40 some minutes to get here today. That's because it's traffic. It's traffic yeah. So, is, we're not like super, super close. 45 yeah. minutes, yeah, it's not bad compared to like 20 some hour plane ride. I mean, if you home. think about it in distance, we're only like a few miles. five miles yeah. apart <laughs> max. All right, now we're going to move on to Instagram comments that we got on a picture I posted a while ago asking for questions. T underscore Goodwin 22. Marine everyday life versus Air Force everyday life. Marine everyday life. Like outside of work, I'd say it's pretty similar. Because me as a married Marine and him as a single airman, our lives are pretty similar. <laughs> but me as a single Marine, um, daily life is a struggle. It, well, especially out here in the States, not so bad. In Okinawa, it's pretty rough for them. Because, like, they can't have cars. You can't go out, nor to get anywhere. You have to pay for a taxi, which that adds up to be a lot of money. I mean... Yeah, pretty much single Marines get shafted hardcore. I mean, it's just... it's. It's a rough life. Yeah, between the two of us, we live a pretty similar life. Once I'm married, it'll be the same thing, pretty similar. CDEB147 said, What job within your branch would you also like to do? Grunt. What does that even mean? Grunt? Okay, you can't. Everybody knows what a grunt is. Like infantry? Yes, everybody knows. You just gotta say infantry. Then. Grunt. It's better. We don't got infantry, we got grunts. <laughs> First went to my recruiter, recruiter, I walked in and was like, hey, how's it going? I want to enlist. And he was like, okay, well, what do you want to be? And I said, I want to be a grunt. Infantry. You should have told me you wanted to be a Marine. Yeah. Marine, <laughs> huh? What do you want to be? I want to be a Marine. So, he was like, okay, well, we got to take a test to see if you're even smart enough to do that. It's funny. Um... So I was like, yeah, sure, I'll take this test. I take this test, and it's called, what, the ASVAB? Yeah. I take the ASVAB, and I got a 92, and he looked at me, and he's like, hey, you're not going to be a grunt, you're going to be something else, because that's a really good score. So I was like, all right, what am I going to be? And he told me combat engineer, so I was like, heck yeah, I get to blow stuff up, and I get to shoot a gun, like, best job ever. And then the staff sergeant at my recruiting station was like, how about not, you're going to be air crew because that takes a high ASVAB score to get, and it's a really cool job. So I asked him what it was, and he's like, you fly around in a big helicopter and you shoot big guns. Turns out I don't shoot the guns, but 
I fly around in a helicopter. That's about <laughs> half of what the recruiter said. Yeah. <laughs> so they're not always lying, they're just not telling the full truth. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. They're not 100% honest, but they're kind of being honest. I wish I could be, I'd like to be a broadcast journalist, which in the Air Force, it's multiple things. Public affairs is something you can do with it. They like, when you get broadcast journalist, once you go through tech school, they can send you to base and you can do all sorts of things. <laughs> you can be a photographer, you can work with public affairs, and you can also make like videos and commercials. Pretty much broadcast journalist is, is you mess with cameras and video cameras the whole time. And I do that as a hobby. And so that's why I would love to do that for the Air Force. But you know, Air Force just picks people and puts them in jobs that they need, even if it doesn't benefit the Air Force the best. So in the future, if I could ever cross train, I would want to become someone that does videos for the Air Force because it's my hobby and it's what I enjoy and I would love to learn more about it, but it's really hard when you work like 15 plus hours a week in maintenance to learn a lot about your hobby. So I would like to get paid to do that full time. So that's what I would want to do in the Air Force in the future. If it was possible to cross train, we'll see. John Malone 50. Who has better uniforms, Air Force or Marines? Okay, now is that a... Uh, Cody, come on. Really? It's not Cody, it's John. I mean, John, really? Is that that's a, a legit question? All right, here's my thing with it. Marines have better uniforms, except Seven. for the stupid pockets on your arms and like your chest are like, aren't they like sideways at an yeah. angle? That's Where stupid. You and why not? They're Velcro, aren't they? No. Oh, you guys yeah. are Velcro? Yes. 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 See, that's stupid too. They are Velcro. That's no, stupid. the shoulder pockets aren't. The chest pocket is stupid. Actually, I'm trying to remember. I think the color's cool, and your guys' hats are better. I don't like Covers. Hats. Yeah. Not hats. It's whatever. Obviously, Marine Corps uniforms are Ooh. way better. Yeah, I, they're better. Michael Walker 7 said, Where do you want to be stationed next? I assume the soon-to-be wifey will be joining you. I want to go to Europe. Somewhere in Europe. 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 I said Europe really weird. Europe. Europe. Lucky to go to Europe. Yeah. Lucky me as a Marine, uh, really I don't have very many choices to go. For your job, you're pretty much uh, locked down to a few places. My okay. job, I can go pretty much anywhere. Okinawa, East Coast, West Coast, about it, really. So if I had to choose, I'm trying to hit all three coasts, and everybody tells me West Coast is the best coast. So now that I'm in Okinawa now, I'm going to go East Coast next if I can, and then West Coast and then possibly come back out to Okinawa. So, we'll see. I like it here. I can travel anywhere. So hopefully somewhere in Europe, because that's all I want. And uh, yes, McKenna will be joining me here in Okinawa in a few weeks. SJK11 said, yeah, how'd you pick the Air Force instead of Marines? Especially when he had already chosen that branch. Did you want to do something to be different than him or? Well, actually, I went to MEPS before he did. I technically swore into the Air Force like a few weeks before he swore into the Marines. And then he ended up getting a job before me and leaving for boot camp before I left for basic. I was still talking about it before him. Yeah. Put it that way. But I had enlisted before him, technically. He's been in two months longer than me, but I had actually signed papers before him. It just took me longer to get to basic training. Shannis P93 said, what do you want to do when you leave the military? Or are you lifers? Uh, I haven't decided. If I, I ever got out, I'd want to go into law enforcement because that's what I was going to college for. I'm going to try to be a lifer, but for some odd reason I can't because it's really hard to stay in now. My job choice would be history teacher and or wrestling assistant coach or coach or something along that line. And if I don't get either of those, I want to be a cook or a chef. I got a few options I want. I could be a home ec teacher. That would be the most chill job ever. That'd be so awesome. It's a wrestling coach. Home ec and assistant coach. coach. Sweet. Yeah, you can be a home ec teacher and a wrestling coach. That'd be awesome. <laughs> you got to cook all day, and then after that, you get to go to wrestling practice. It's Dylan Horn said, was it easy to get your MOS you wanted in the Marine Corps? Uh, yeah, it was easy for me. Um, for other people, no, not so much. When you score 92 on your ASVAB, it's pretty easy. Because even though I scored high on my ASVAB, um, the job I got as air crew 
apparently not a lot of people get. There's like one job opening for that like every few months or something or like two job openings and I just happened to be there at the right time to get my job. Even though I had no idea what it was, I still got it. And turns out it's one of the most fun jobs ever. Kit Kat Key Clack said, what are your jobs in the Air Force and Marines and do you carry guns? I go to work carrying a rocket launcher. No, I'm kidding. When was the last time you touched a gun? Before I went on my trip, I did. It was part of my training. Okay, I've touched, like, you know, physically put my hand on a few, but actually used is a different story. But really, I've only had one time where I used one since I've been in. But it was only for practice. Yes. Yeah. Not training. Actually used, used. Training purposes. And uh, I've only used a training once, and that was at BMT. Yeah. Carrying a gun in the game. It's <laughs> about so as close as we get to guns is in video games. Yeah, he's air crew for the Ospreys, and I'm aircraft structural maintainer, and I work on the F-15s. SRAH19 said, "Would you all ever switch positions?" No. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give I would switch positions for one day, but I would not want to be in the Marines. But I think it would be cool to fly, like once. Robinson underscore 1995 asked, how much free time do you both get? Uh, recently started working five days a week, yes. What were you working before? Like, seven days a week? Well, it wasn't really seven days a week. We always got Sunday off, but we would work Monday, Monday through Saturday. I mean, it started to slow down now. We're working less. It's better. I work five days a week. I mean, every once in a while we have weekend duty. I've been scheduled for weekend duty three times since I've been here in 16 months. So weekend duty is just like four people that are scheduled for the weekend. And they have to come in on the weekend both days. I haven't had weekend duty in a few months. So I just work five days a week. After work, we can do what we want. Weekends, if you have them off, do what you want. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like a ton of free time because you work more than full time. Unless you have like an honor job, which is a desk job, then you work like 40 hours a week. Yeah, I can. I mean, I get a decent amount of free time, enough to do what I want. I mean, recently I've started playing Destiny a lot. I don't have time for video games. Considering that I make YouTube videos, which is practically a full-time job, on top of my Air Force full-time job, I have a lot of free time, but then I use all of my free time doing stuff for YouTube. That's why a lot of people don't make Air Force or any military branch videos like I made them because it takes so much free time pretty much almost all your free time and that's why I've made more videos and kept making videos throughout my like career so far and other people make them go to basic make a few after basic and then get to their base and just stop because they want to enjoy their free time instead of use it to make videos constantly dreams monet can buy it's not money, because I read read the name. Dreams money can buy. Money. Why did you both decide to go active duty? Do you think y'all will re-enlist? I'll re-enlist. As of right now. I haven't decided to re-enlist. But why did we go active duty? I personally think there's no reason to go reserves. That's just my point of view. I didn't want to join the Air Force and then go back home and deliver pizzas full time and then work one weekend a month for the Air Force. So that's why I went active duty. Because I wanted a full paycheck to work for the Air Force. I didn't want like a few hundred dollars a month. Just never even looked at Guard or Reserve. Active duty was the only way to go. If I was going to serve, I was going to serve full time. That's basically it for me too. California. How to train for boot camp. Well, boot camp, that's Marine Corps. I'm assuming you're thinking about going into Marine Corps since you said boot camp. Really, just go to your recruiting station and tell your recruiter like, hey, what, what, do you, what should I do to train myself? And they're going to have you do workouts that are going to be similar to what you might do in boot camp. And they're, they won't treat you the same. Like my, my recruiting station, they had all the poolies come in formation and they taught us a, a small amount of drill. They taught us a small amount of how to properly stand, how to properly greet, like all the general baseline stuff that you need to get through boot camp. My recruiter did the same thing. But really, there's no real way to prepare yourself for boot camp. It's going to come to you as a shocker. Just make sure you're not lazy. And you can listen. And if you are lazy, don't get caught. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much, don't be lazy. Learn to listen. Do push-ups, sit-ups, and run. That push-ups, sit-ups is like a core thing 
for you guys too. Yeah. Honestly, getting thrown into boot camp, you may think you know what you're doing or what you've read, but until you experience it, you it's really a, don't. You can't imagine what it's like. Nick underscore priest thirty four said, "Explain the feeling you felt graduating boot camp." Okay, you know that gut feeling you get when something's like so close, you can literally taste it. Like from day one of boot camp, everybody in my platoon had a notebook and they started writing down food that they were gonna eat. Now. Sorry, my cats, they, they get hungry and then they'll stare at the food dish and like, yeah, they're pretty stupid. We wrote all these foods and all these candies that we were going to eat as soon as we graduated, as soon as we got out. We we're going to go find these and we're going to eat them all because they're going to be delicious. Now imagine the day before you graduate, you start thinking about all these foods and you can literally taste them. Literally, like Skittles. You haven't had Skittles in months, but you can literally taste a Skittle now because you're thinking about it and it's so close. That feeling of happiness is just undescribable. I'm not one to like get super emotional during that stuff, but when I saw my family, I cried. Yeah, I when I saw my family, I didn't cry, but I teared up. Like, that kind of excitement that makes you get like this because you're so excited. And, like. Going home in two days, I'll talk on the phone with McKenna, and I'll just be like, Oh my gosh, I want to go home. Because it's like so close. It's like, it's the same feeling. It's just like an excitement that's just like going to explode. Like, your whole body feels it. Alright, and the last question we have to answer is underscore Blake McNally. And he said, how easy slash hard is it to balance finances? Really, I th think that's a personal question. Like... You know, if you're really bad at keeping money, then probably if you spend crazy. money, if you spend your money on a lot of stupid stuff, it's gonna be really hard to balance your finances. Mm -hmm. If you logically think about where you're spending your money and if you need it and if it's important, and you limit your spending, it's pretty easy to balance your finances. You're already starting a retirement plan. Yeah, 21 years old, already started a retirement plan. I haven't started a retirement plan, but I've been saving up money. I've been saving up a lot of money, and I've spent a lot of money this year, because this will be the second time I've gone home, plus I had to buy two trip, uh, two round trip tickets this time, because McKenna's coming back with me, that was out of my pocket, yeah, engagement ring, everything, it's like, I've spent a lot of money this year, a lot, in one year. I still have quite a bit of money in my bank account right now, because I don't spend it unless it's very important to me, as in plane tickets home and a ring for my fiance. So it's like, that's pretty much the only things I've really blown my money on. And I won't even call it blowing my money because that's the most important things to me is her and my family. And I spend money to see them. So you don't always have to have the newest, nicest things, especially when you're not making the amount of money to afford that lifestyle. So yeah, that was our Air Force and Marine brother Q&A. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I know this video is like an hour long, but yeah, this gives you an insight from a Marine and Airman perspective. Also, be sure to check out the new channel that McKenna and I are going to start, starting the day of our wedding. It's corny and called Got Love. Yeah, it's called Got Love, because you know, that's the last name. It's Let cheesy. Go. <laughs> that's going to be in the description below. If you want to swing over there, give us a subscribe.